I stopped a robbery at my part time job due to the individual's plan of action. Have you ever experienced or witnessed a real world's dumbest criminals moment? I worked at a bowling alley in high school. We had a guy climb up into the ceiling in the restroom and wait until we closed, so he could climb down and rob it. Not only did he not get any money everything was locked up in a gigantic safe from the 1930s that probably weighed over a thousand pounds, but he couldn't even get out of the building. All the steel fire doors were padlocked on the outside, and I guess he didn't want to risk being seen smashing the glass on the front doors, since it was right by a busy road. He did the only logical thing, which was go back to the bar and drink all night. The manager found him passed out on the floor when he opened up in the morning. An Aussie guy I know was out drinking in Canada with another Aussie mate. His mate left early to go back to the flat they were sharing in Vancouver and was accosted in a dark alley by two men with knives. Being absolutely sloshed off his tea he failed to pick up on the men's intent or their knives and simply pushed them aside saying nah sorry mate, I'm Australian and continued to frick off home. The poor fellow later realized that he'd just brushed off two armed muggers by tell them he was Australian and ignoring them. This is the most Australian thing I've heard all week. There were two guys from my high school that robbed a little convenience store. They had ski masks and guns and the robbery went pretty smoothly for them. But they also decided to wear their letterman coats with their names on the back. They were later arrested. Back when I worked at Walmart, one of the best laughs I ever got while working there was watching two middle aged women run into the store, grab about 50 of those Visa gift cards from the rack, then run out of the store, laughing while they did it, you have to activate them, they are completely worthless without being activated, I bet they were pretty upset when they realized they had just stolen a shitload of nothing. A recent crime streak we've seen is people grabbing the numbers from the prepaid cards and leaving them in the store. Then, a few days later, they try to use them at random places, hoping someone has activated them. It works surprisingly well, as most people don't pay attention to the little scratch off part. I was parked in the far end of a parking lot of a 24 hour grocery store, sitting in the driver's seat checking a few emails and letting my window defrost. I had the window rolled down just a tiny bit, basically enough for someone to fit their arm through if they really tried. A guy approaches from the back, so I hear him and look that way. He tells me to get out of the car. The door is locked and he's holding a knife towards the window. He doesn't have a firearm. I just kind of look at him and say number with a confused look. My firearm is in my shoulder holster, but my coat is buttoned up. He awkwardly tries to open the door, can't, then actually sticks his arm in through the tiny part of the window that's rolled down. I immediately hit the button and roll it up, and so he's just stuck there, screaming in pain and pounding on the window with his other hand. He finally drops the knife, and so I'll let the window down a bit and he runs off. Should've started driving off with the window rolled up still. In college I worked as a loss prevention guy for one of the big boxes. You know, sit in a little room and watch cameras to catch shoplifters. We were having a problem with customers' wallets being stolen out of the men's fitting rooms. The victim would go in, try on a new pair of pants, come out to show his wife and when he went back into the fitting room his wallet would be gone. So one afternoon I get a call from the sales staff about a fight in the men's fitting room. I run down there to find a 6 feet 2 inches black guy with a 5 feet 2 inches white guy in a headlock. The black guy caught the white guy coming out of his room with his wallet. Turns out the black guy's wallet was his secret service badge and credentials. Oops. I laughed so hard at this. Karma can act pretty frickin' fast. A few weeks ago I'm getting home from late night classes when this guy jumps out and says Jimmy all your money or something like that. Problem is, he has no weapon, no gun, no knife. He wasn't even a threatening looking dude. I just sorta walked past him back to my dorm. Guy keeps at it till we get near my dorm. He gets in front of the door and demands money. I pick up a rusted pipe that was always near the door and he backs off. Laziest criminal ever. He did have persistence though. A friend of my cousin went to a Circle K in a small town and went to buy alcohol. He went to the counter. They asked for it so he could purchase. Obviously. He showed them and then put them at gunpoint and said he was robbing them. Stupidest kid ever. And he was mega caught. I believe he's still in jail on several charges. Don't worry. I can steal this. I'm 21. 
Not really a stupid criminal more of a gentleman robber actually. I went out at like 2 in the morning to buy cigarettes. Tried a few shops but they were all closed. While walking home in sorrow I was accosted by a young man with a knife. Who asked quite politely for for all my money. I was a very poor backpacker at the time and the $50 in my pocket was pretty much the last of my money for the month. I showed the guy my empty wallet hoping he would leave it at that but he noticed my bus pass and decided to take that instead. He then handed me two cigarettes and apologized for the inconvenience and walked away. In a state of semi-shock I realized that without my bus pass I had no way of getting the 5am bus to work. Dang Vancouver Transport Company. And expressed my frustration out loud. The guy came back and asked me what was wrong. After I explained he handed me back my bus pass and said we've all got to make a living somehow. I didn't actually witness this. But I did witness the effects. One afternoon while trying to cook dinner, the power started acting funny. It wasn't a blackout, but more of a brownout, where power dimmed, and came back on, flickered, went out, came back on, dimmed, up and down for several minutes. Then eventually the power went out. It would come back on for a few minutes now and then, but it was more or less out for another hour or two. I found out a couple days later. That some idiot tried to steal copper wire from some power station. The flickering of lights and such was him being cooked by several thousand volts. Idiot got killed trying to steal $100 worth of copper wire. A couple of people broke into my storage facility once. They cut through the fence and was going through units when they realized there was a camera mounted near them pointed right where they were standing. They panic, cover their faces up, and then decide to get rid of the camera. They climb up on something and start trying to tear the camera down. While doing this, there is nothing covering their faces anymore and they're literally staring into the lens of the camera no more than 3 feet away. Idiots similar to yours went through a storage facility we use. The cut the lock off our unit and several others in the same line, but didn't take anything. They only took some firearms stored in one unit. So... They got caught because they were the only ones who knew the firearms were stored there besides the renter. I once foiled a clever plan by an elderly man at the department store I used to work at. He had a blazer with countless hidden pockets and he was filling them with bottles of oil of Olay moisturizer. The loss prevention guy called me to help corner him. As he was leaving the door, he saw that I was looking at him and started to run. We ran after him and he looked back at us. That's where he fricked up. He tripped over his own feet and fell like a sack of potatoes. Most of the moisturizer bottles exploded and he was lubed neck to knee. He smelled fantastic though. Had a drunk guy try to steal a bottle of vodka we wouldn't sell him. He grabbed it off the poor cashier and ran for the door. Fairly standard tactic. What he did however was stop in the door to taunt us with his brilliant scheme. Literally turned in the door to stop and go woo woo and give us the finger. Whereupon he was hit in the chest by the security guard and big rab. The 6 feet 5 guy who stocks the alcohol aisle. He managed to scramble away from them and down the car park ramp however. Real shame because our car park ends in a 15 foot high fence to stop people climbing over it onto the railway tracks on the other side. Out a freaking belland. His girlfriend didn't even wait with him. She just bought her stuff and went. This just happened in my town. A man took a car. Allegedly, since he hasn't been convicted, from an auto repair place after bashing apart the after hours key box. When police later found the car, they didn't have far to look. Inside the car was a McDonald's receipt and a receipt for the liquor store. Police simply went to both stores and got the video footage of the man going through the drive through and stopping at the liquor store in the stolen car. They needn't have bothered. Also inside the car was paperwork from the town's jail with the man's name on it. A man. Allegedly, since he hasn't been convicted, it's late. I spend too much time trying to figure out why he was allegedly a man. Dude comes into my store, purchases an item with a hundred dollar bill. I give him his change. He says that's not enough change and reaches across the counter, into the register drawer, to try to grab back the hundred he gave me. So I slam the drawer on his fingers. The end. Charging mother, except my drawer won't close. This one actually happens a lot, but it happened to me one night several years ago during a graveyard shift. 
I was working alone on a Sunday night at a gas station. Now this wasn't a bad area but it wasn't great either so the GM figured that they didn't need two people watching the store. I disagreed with him. But I digress. I was in the back of the store mopping, doing my best to keep an eye out for people approaching the store so I could run back to the registers before they got inside. Anyway, I'm mopping when a van suddenly pulls up in reverse to the store. Just as I started to put the mop aside, literally no more than 2 seconds after this, the doors to the back open up and two dudes with sweaters tied around their heads jump out the back. They rush inside the store, yelling run up to the counter and grab both of the teller machines. They rip out the power cords, run out of the store with their loot and jump into the back of the van. It speeds off and they hit the road. All of this happened in about 20 seconds, and I just stood there and watched it. What these idiots didn't realize is that the freaking machines are separate from the cash drawer for this very reason. They effectively made off with zero dollars but did me a favor because I didn't have to work for the next two days since the store couldn't operate until they got the new machines in. TL. DR. Idiot thieves stole inconsequential registers thinking that they were getting the money in the drawer under the counters with them. Working as a cashier for a grocery store, a customer came and placed a random assortment of things up at my register. Candy, soda, a couple kids toys and a pre-cooked chicken from the deli. She mentioned to me that she was from Oregon and would like the tax removed. We can do that in WA for customers from specific states. To do this, she had to give me her it so I could record the info on it before removing the tax from the transaction. After giving her her total she said she would like to pay with a check. She is filling it out as I noticed it was pre-signed. I asked her whose they were and if they were available to come sign the check in front of me. She said they belonged to her mom who was in the car. When she left I saw her get in the passenger seat of a van and leave. So I took down the license plate as they drove off. After this all happened I called my floor manager over and told him what happened. We both shrug and basically say we're leaving it at that. Later that day the loss prevention guy calls me upstairs, which is never normally a good thing. He tells me that I had made a good catch, because two women had been going around town with a stolen book of checks and I was the reason the cops had an aid and a license plate to go after. ETL. DR. A lady gave me her id to prove she deserved a $0.78 discount on goods she intended to pay for with stolen checks. I was summoned to court to tell this story to a judge. I work in a car audio store. Gangbanger wannabe shows up wanting us to install his amplifier right now. All my installers are busy and tell him ain't going to happen today. But tomorrow we can. He gets all upset and tells me his boy will install it himself all he needs is the wires. I show him our amp kits and he picks one out and pays with a credit card and shows me his id which is good. So the next thing I see is this fool grabbing a box with some entry level 12 inches woofers and running out the door and throwing the box into his ride and peeling out of our parking lot. The store was pretty crowded and more than a few customers saw what just went down and asked should they chase this guy down. I couldn't believe that this idiot just paid with a credit card and I checked his name and it and it matched so I had all the information I needed to have him arrested. But I said oh heck no I just wrote up a ticket and manually punched in the credit card for 3x the amount something like $585.99 instead of $169.96. The charge got approved and was never contested either. I hope he enjoys his speakers. Haha. <laughs> when I still worked at a fast food chain I only ever had a drunk dude who insisted he should have a free drink for some kind of reason. So he grabs a cup and proceeds to beverage station to fill it. Of course he pays afterwards. And I just added the drink to his bill. Last week. I just left Kdoba when I saw a kid walk up to a skateboarder and attempt to steal his skateboard. The first kid was followed by his two friends, both of whom were shouting Hector, it's not your board, let it go. Hector did not let go, until the five cops who were in Kdoba came out and arrested him. They were parked outside. He was not a clever young lad. I work at my family's liquor store and we have a debit credit machine where we take the card, punch in our store I'd cashier it, then amount, stick the card in and hand it back. This one fellow comes in and grabs a six pack from T Cooler and comes to the counter. He was the only other person in the store besides a random guy in a corner going through wine, so I rang the six pack and when I saw him grab it, 
he came up to the till and I asked him how he was doing and he said fine and I told him his total as he was just pulling up to the till and he mumbled something and reached into his coat and pulled out a gun and placed it on the counter with a barrel or whatever you call the part that it shoots from facing me and slides it a few inches forward. Due to being used to people doing that with credit debit cards I just stretched out and grabbed the gun with one hand and the debit machine and the other. He wasn't holding onto it very firmly so I just pulled it away and I realized as soon as I grabbed it tat it was a gun not a credit card so I froze with his gun in my hand and the debit machine and the other. We looked at each other and then he bolted leaving the gun behind. I called my uncle and then the cops who came and took a statement and after told me that the gun was empty so I wasn't really in any real danger but it's still one of the funniest things to ever happen to me. You must have looked like such a badass for that half second that you didn't realize what you were doing. My dad was in a bank and some guy tries to rob the place. Dad notices the guy's gun and tells him to shoot him. The guy wouldn't do it after constant demand by my dad and left the place. He tried to rob the bank with a plastic gun. Easy way to save the day. On ya, dad. Balls. Of. Steel. Some creepy looking guy tried to carjack me. I was leaving the supermarket at 8 in the morning on my way through Rotorua to go to Wellington. He knocks on my window and I roll it down about an inch. He asks if I can give him a ride to some gas station. I'm not too familiar with the place so I ask where it is and he points up the road. Then he tells me I can just drop him at the corner of the street about 100 meters away. I laughed and told him to walk. Then he tried to force his way into my car. A 1973 Mercedes. So I opened the door as hard as I could into him and slammed it shut on his fingers. Those doors weighed like 80 kilos. I know this because I had to take them off to fix some rust around the hinges. I feel bad for possibly breaking his fingers. Tried to jack a car and now he can't even jack himself. Don't feel bad in the slightest. Not mine, but rather my sister's co-worker. Pardon the third hand information. My sister used to work at a bank in a Walmart. And her co-worker had this somewhat older pickup truck. About 15 years old at the time of this story. The truck was pretty unremarkable in every way. Stock parts. Stock stereo. Average looking. Some idiot punched out the driver's side window and stole the CD player. Which didn't play past track 7 on any given CD. Mind you. It was stock and also 15 years old. Instead of disconnecting the plugs like a normal thief. He cut all the wires making it a stolen CD player that now required repair. The idiot bled all over the inside of the truck because he punched the window in, and proceeded to wrap his hand up in one of the girl's spare work shirt. After taking the CD player, he then walks into Walmart and tries to steal a TV. Not one of the newer TVs that only weights like 25 pounds. The big tube TVs that weighs like 80. When he walked out, the alarm went off. He told the person at the door that it was a return, and he was simply taking his old one back to his car. Keep in mind that he still had a bloody bank teller's polo wrapped around his hand. That had an employee's name on it. An employee who was working at that store at that moment. Of course the friend and the store press charges. The friend was also offered an appearance on one of those judge TV shows, but declined because the case was too stupid. For a daytime judge show. Too stupid for a daytime judge show. Dang. That's an entirely deeper circle of stupid. My Denny's is too inept to be robbed. A man walked in and went to the podium cash stand. He said he had a gun, and wanted the money in the drawer. The first waitress sighed in disgust and said I'm not even in the register, and walked away. A second waitress was standing nearby and looked at her husband, sitting in the nearest table, and mouthed call the cops. The husband says at regular volume I don't even have my cell phone on me. At this point, the robber decides that maybe this isn't the best route, and begins to flee. They caught him about a tenth of a mile away, on foot. Seriously, who sees a Denny's and thinks I bet I can steal enough money from them to make it worth it. Also in places like that it is easier just to walk around the counter and grab the money yourself. No demands made, no gun in hand. Anybody remember box tops? For those who don't. They are small squares on the tops of boxes of food that if you cut out and bring to an elementary school, that school gets 10 cents per box top. When I was young, still in elementary, a kid in my class stole the class's stash of box tops because he wanted the money for himself. So stupid. 
Not really a crime, but I figure it fits. This actually just happened to me this morning in my cab. Had a really young snobby guy in the taxi. First year university at a guess. He was pretty wasted and fairly abusive. Got to his parents house in a decent area of town and he had no money on him so nipped inside to get some. Back and forward various times still no money, all the time giving me abuse. Finally he coughed up just over half the fare. That'll have to do for you he said. You can call the police if you want but I doubt they would waste their time on chasing up a few extra pounds in a well to do middle class area such as this. Go on, toddle off then, he added, motioning for me to leave. I did. As I drove away he stood triumphantly in his doorway, a broad smile on his face and his middle finger extended proudly in my direction, completely oblivious to the fact that minutes earlier he had handed his iPhone over as collateral. Hahaha <laughs> awesome. I work part time in a grocery store that is robbed all the goddamn time. Like seriously, once or twice every month. It's gotten to the point where I now just laugh every time I arrive at work to see the store has been broken into again. One particular night just before we were beginning to close, a brazen robber runs into the store who appears to be no older than 20 with a cricket bat and nervously demanded the money from the register. The clerk obeys and gives the man less than $200. The reward hardly seems proportional to the potential ramifications. At this point the customers at the front end are backing away and the man attempts to make an escape. As he breaks for the door, while I'm standing in an adjacent aisle where the soup pleasantly happened to be shelved, I grab a big old can of tomato soup and give it a friendly toss in the vicinity of his face. KO. Slam dunk. Hole in one. He takes a comical fall into the flower display in a glorious explosion of flowers and water. But then every male customer jumps on the bastard and pins him down until the police arrive. TL. DR. Threw a can of soup at a robber and became a superhero. This isn't really funny, but this guy was so dumb. I used to work at a Petco in Alabama. We had a guy who would compulsively steal things. It was never anything expensive. Just toys for his dog, or something like that. One night, about 30 minutes before closing, he comes in with a friend. We know his routine by now. Get his friend to distract us while he steals. Anyway, his friend comes up to me to ask something about dog food, when I noticed that the thief went to the bird aisle. So I agree to help him, but I make a discreet page to our manager to let him know what's going on. Manager goes to find him, and sees him stuffing a bird perch down his pants. I don't just mean a little one either, this thing was almost 2 feet long and near and pink. So naturally, my manager calls the cops and he eventually has to pull this ridiculous thing out of his pants. The penis jokes were numerous. He just wanted a perch for his woodpecker. So I worked at a restaurant a few years back. I used to work behind the bar every once in a while this guy there is buying drink after drink. I probably got his tab up to about $65. I remember the guy getting up, figured he was going to the bathroom or something, but he just never came back. About an hour or so after that a busboy found a wallet on the ground right under the seat he was sitting at. I take out the license to see if it was the guy and it was. Saw a credit card in there and charged it. He still hasn't returned for the wallet. I one time, while sitting in my cruiser, witnessed a man walking around a used car lot at night in the middle of winter. It had snowed for a while and was still snowing at the time. Before going to talk to him, I radioed one of my buddies to come meet with me and watch him for a minute. The guy opens one of the car's doors, which is unlocked, and proceeds to start hot wiring the car. As we start to drive over, he gets the car started, puts it in drive, and floors it. He forgot to wipe the snow off the windshield and drove straight into a light pole about 4 feet in front of the car he stole. Not my own story, but an acquaintance from years ago. He was working nights at a gas station convenience store, and had a group of usual customers who he got to know the comings and goings of. One man in particular was known to pretty much always wear the same clothes and stood out because he only had one eye and, being poor, wore a patch over the non-functioning eye. He came there every night to buy cigarettes, and also rented movies a couple of times per week. So, the store had his name and address. One night. Old acquaintance was working at the station when I patch man came in, but was wearing a large paper bag on his head. Employee, hey man, here for your usual smokes, patch, 
No. This is a freaking robbery. Employee. Haha. <laughs> Good one. And proceeds to put this guy's cigarettes on the counter. Patch. I'm serious. Give me all the money in the drawer. Eventually. The guy figured out the robbery attempt was real. Handed over the money. And then called the police when I patch man left. Now. It's pretty stupid to rob a place where you regularly shop and where they have your name on computer as a video renter. But even more dumb than that. He only cut one eye hole in the paper bag. It's things like this that make me think I could get away with crimes. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.